Water, a precious resource. Water is one of the most precious resources that the earth provides to the living organisms. Its use in modern age is manifold. We can live without food for some days, but we cannot live without water even for a short period of time. We use it for drinking and other domestic needs, irrigation, industrial use, transportation, power production, and waste disposal, etc. The plants and animals also need water to survive. Distribution of water on Earth. About three fourths of the Earth's surface is covered by water, but most of this water is available as saline water in oceans and seas. Fresh water is a small fraction of total water on the Earth. Due to this, we face high shortage of drinking water. The availability of water on the Earth can be understood with a simple example. If a bucket full of water represents as the total water available on the earth, then a mug of water shows the total fresh water for use. Out of this, a glass of water shows the water which is available as groundwater. About one fourth spoonful of water shows all the water available in lakes and rivers of the world. It means that we should use it as much wisely as possible. Changing states of water. Water is available in all the three states of matter. Ice is the solid state, water is the liquid state, and vapor is the gaseous state. Water is available in the form of all these three states. However, it keeps on changing its state in a cyclic manner in nature. Solid Ice is a solid form of water present in glaciers, icebergs as snow, hail and frost. In our homes, we can get this state by cooling water in refrigerator. Liquid. Water is a liquid state of water that covers about three-fourths of the surface of the earth in form of lakes, rivers and oceans. We use this state for many activities every day. Gas. It is present as water vapor in the form of fog, steam and clouds. When we boil water, we get this form of water in the form of steam. Water can exist in all three states because it can change its state very easily with the increase of temperature. This change also occurs in nature, forming a cycle called water cycle. Importance of water Water is one of the most important substances on the earth. All plants and animals must have water to survive. If there is no water, there would be no life on earth. Water makes up more than two-thirds of human body weight. For human and animal life, water is important for animals and humans for various life processes inside the body. Some of them regulate body temperature, moisten tissues such as those in the mouth, eyes and nose, lubricates joints, protects body organs and tissues, helps prevent constipation, lessens the burden on the kidneys and liver by flushing out waste products, helps dissolve minerals and other nutrients to make them accessible to the body, carries nutrients and oxygen to the body cells. Digestion of food needs water. For plants, water is important for plants to carry out many important activities, helps in germination of seeds, help plant cells to keep their shape, cool plants through the process of transpiration, dissolve and transport mineral salts from the root to the other parts of the plant, photosynthesis needs water, growth in plants cannot occur without it. Some other uses of water. Water is also used for various other purposes in our everyday life. Some of these are domestic purposes, cooking, drinking, bathing, washing, agricultural purposes, farming, gardening, fisheries, Industrial purposes, manufacturing various products, recreation, swimming, rafting, boating, hydropower generation for electric supply. Water cycle, water from rivers, lakes, ponds, oceans and seas, etc. evaporates all the time from the earth's surface. In fact, the evaporation is a continuous process on the earth. If you spread wet clothes on the clothes line for drying, the water evaporates from them and escapes to the sky in the form of water vapor. This change of water into water vapor is called evaporation. The water vapor rises up with warm air. Since it is cold high up, water vapor cools down and condenses to form tiny droplets of liquid water. This change of water vapor into water drops is called condensation. 
a large number of such droplets accumulate high up in the atmosphere to form clouds. When the clouds cool down further, these tiny droplets form larger drops of water and fall to the ground as rain. In cold weather, the water drops may freeze and fall as hail or snow. The falling down of water from the earth in the form of rain, hail or snow is called precipitation. The cyclic movement of water from the sources of water to sky as water vapor and from sky to the earth as rain, hail or snow is called water cycle. Water cycle is a continuous process in nature. The rain falls on the earth. Some of this water drains into rivers and some seeps down through the soil and gets collected as groundwater. The movement of water in nature through water cycle is a never-ending process. It maintains the water supply on the earth. The process can be summarized in the following steps. Evaporation. Water in seas, rivers, lakes, ponds or streams evaporates because of the heat of the sun. Plants also give out a large amount of water through their leaves. This is called transpiration. All this evaporated water goes into the atmosphere. Condensation. Water vapor rises up and due to cooling condenses to form clouds. Precipitation. Water stored in clouds reaches the ground in the form of rain, hail or snow. Sources of water. There are two main sources of water on the earth. These are groundwater and surface water. Groundwater. Groundwater is present in between the various layers of soil and impervious rocks. It is actually rainwater which mainly comes from seepage of water accumulated under the ground. Rainwater which goes into the soil gets collected at a certain level. A part of the rainwater gets absorbed by the ground and seems to disappear in the soil. The process of seeping of water into the ground is called infiltration. This water gets stored beneath the surface of earth, so it is called groundwater. It is free from suspended impurities as it gets filtered through the several layers of soil. At some places, the groundwater remains stored between the layers of hard rocks below the water table. This is known as an aquifer. Water in the aquifers can be usually pumped out with the help of tube wells or hand pumps. It is also available in the form of spring water. Well, the reservoir of water under the earth but above the impervious rocks is called well. The well water contains soluble impurities. Hand pump. Hand pumps are water lifting devices that can be operated manually to withdraw water from groundwater sources and reservoirs or to pump water into distribution systems. They are relatively easy to install, simple to operate and capable of lifting adequate amounts of water from the depths up to about 80 meters below the ground. Spring water the groundwater which comes out with pressure in the form of spring from any opening on the earth is called spring water. It contains dissolved salts and minerals and it is free from suspended impurities. It also has some medicinal value. Surface water. Water present on the surface of the earth is called surface water. The surface sources of water are rain, rivers, ponds, lakes, seas and oceans. Rainwater. It is the purest form of naturally occurring water. At places where heavy industries are present, the pollutants like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide gases are more. These gases dissolve in water to form acids like carbonic acid and sulfuric acid. This results into an acid rain which further damages crops, forests, buildings, etc. The acid rain is the result of air pollution. It can also cause many health problems in people. Rivers. The large flowing water bodies are called rivers. Rivers like Ganga and Brahmaputra, which originate from Himalayas, are flowing water throughout the year. There are many other rivers in India which become dry or have very less amount of water during summer. Lakes. The small reservoir of water is called lake. The lakes are formed due to the collection of rainwater in low-lying areas. There are only a few natural lakes in our country. A few artificial lakes have also been built at some places to fulfill the demand of water. Pond. A pond is a small body of standing water. Water collected in pond during rainy season is commonly used for irrigation in South India. Ocean and Seas. 
Oceans and seas contain salty water or saline water. This is due to the presence of large quantities of salt in which makes it unfit for drinking and agricultural purpose. It can be made portable by reverse osmosis, RO technique. Ocean and seas also act as a habitat for large number of plants and animals. These lay an important role in water cycle on the earth. Monsoon rains throughout the India are the results of clouds of water vapour produced in Indian oceans during summer season. Distribution of water in India Water availability in our country depends highly on the arrival of monsoons. The monsoons bring heavy rains between June and October. India ranges from places having waterless conditions, Thar Desert, to the places with rainforests, that is, northeastern states. Our country has a huge network of rivers. Three major rivers are Indus, Ganga and the Brahmaputra originate in the Himalayas and supply water to nearly two-thirds of the plain area. Water in these rivers is also strongly influenced by the seasonal monsoon. In monsoon season, water levels in rivers increase greatly and may result in floods. On the other hand, during the dry season, water levels go down heavily in most large rivers. Smaller tributaries and streams even dry off completely during summers. To regulate water flow and distribute water more evenly throughout the year, large dams have been constructed on a number of rivers. The hilly regions of north and west do not allow adequate underground seepage of water, so the groundwater is mostly limited to low-lying areas such as valleys. The peninsular area of our country also does not allow proper absorption of water and therefore do not have large aquifers. A peninsula is a region of land surrounded by water on three sides. The coastal plains are a rich storehouse of groundwater but they can be contaminated by salt water inflow caused by the overpumping of groundwater. Water scarcity The shortage of water creating imbalance between the demand and supply of water is called scarcity of water. We use water for almost every activity like drinking, washing, cooking, cleaning, etc. This precious resource is largely getting wasted due to human carelessness and lack of planning. Hence, we are facing the scarcity of water. In our country, a large population does not get sufficient clean water for their daily needs. Causes of water scarcity The water scarcity is mostly man-made due to excess population growth and mismanagement of water resources. Some of the major reasons for water scarcity are Humans are overusing water in many cases, wasting it. Loss of water due to leakage, excessive use of water for washing purposes, taps left open after use are some common sites that form the basis of the problem of water scarcity. Due to the large increase in population, the demand is much more than supply. Industrialization and urbanization has hugely increased the consumption of water. Inefficient use of water for agriculture, the traditional techniques of irrigation causes more water loss due to evaporation, drainage, percolation and excess use of groundwater. Sewage and waste water drainage into traditional water bodies. Release of chemicals and fluents into rivers, streams and ponds. Lack of efficient water management and distribution of water between urban consumers, the agricultural sector and industry. Depletion of water table The topmost layer of the underground water is called water table. When rainfall occurs, some of it runs off on the surface of the earth which forms streams and rivers. Some of it passes through the soil into the non-porous rocks deep below the ground. The upper level of this groundwater forms the water table. The water table does not get affected as long as we draw as much water which can be replenished by natural processes. However, it may go down if the water is not sufficiently replenished. The various reasons of depletion of water table are When there is more population, it demands more water to survive and for other daily uses. There will be demand of more houses to live. The construction of houses and buildings also requires water. In cities, the construction of pavements, cementing of roads, lanes and other open areas do not allow sewage of water into the ground. To fulfill the different needs of people, various industries are also set up. 
the industrialization needs more water for its production of work. Trees are cut to make buildings, furniture, paper and other usable items. The roots of trees bind the soil in which the storehouse of groundwater. Due to excessive felling of trees, groundwater level is also decreasing. Conservation of water The preservation, control, development and management of water and its resources is called water conservation. It simply refers to saving water for its wastage. The conservation of water involves all the activities to manage fresh water and protect the water resources. Ways to Conserve Water It is our duty to save water and make it available for others. There are several ways of water conservation that we all should follow strictly to get the desired result. Do not keep the taps open when not in use. Turn off the taps while you are still brushing your teeth or washing your hands. Do not run more water than necessary while washing clothes, utensils, etc. Make sure the unused or collected water is used for other purposes like cleaning, washing, gardening, etc. Then letting it run down your washrooms. Do not let a break in the pipe or a crack in the wall unattended. Fix them as soon as possible to avoid water leakage and wastage. Use bucket and mug while taking bath. Do not water your plants in rainy season. Do not wash your car with running water pipe. Never pollute water bodies. The pollution of water is mixing of harmful substances in water that make it unfit for use. The roots of trees conserve water. Plant as many trees you can in your surroundings. Construction of dams and reservoirs to control floods and collect water. Recycle water in industries and use it as many times as possible before disposing it. Forests help in increasing the amount of water vapor in the air and bring rain. They slow down the flow of rainwater which helps in its percolation. The deforestation reduces the amount of rain and also the absorption of water by the soil. Create awareness about conservation of water among your friends and family. Instead of letting rainwater run off into the sea, it can be used to recharge groundwater. This is known as rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting can be used to raise the water table. It can be also used to create water storage areas. In olden days, people built deep step wells into the ground. These deep step wells are called bavaries or step wells. During the rainy season, these wells are filled with water. The water is stored in these wells for longer time because they are very deep, the evaporation of water is less. During shortage, people use this water. The old barberies can again be revived by recreating awareness among people. Drip irrigation is an economical way of using water. This technique involves the use of tubes to deliver water straight to the base of a plant, where it is taken up by the roots. Reuse wastewater.